society became a rage of boils. From hence came this torrent. From whence will come any help? Job goes straight to God and pleads his case. His head hurts, his body hurts, his heart hurts. And God answers, not with answers, but with questions and an ocean of questions. Yes, he answered with other questions. After several dozen questions, Job had gotten the point. What is it? The point is God owes you nothing. No reasons, no explanations, nothing. If he gave them, you wouldn't understand them anyway. God is God and he knows what he's doing. We can't trace his hand, trust his heart. We can't trace his hand. When you can't trace him, can you trust him? You don't answer that when you can't trace God, when you don't see how he's working, when you don't see him moving, when you don't feel him touching, can you trust God? When you can't trust trace him, can you trust him? That's a good question. What do you know about the character of God that enables you to trust his heart? And that's a good that's why it's a good thing to know the word because the enemy will have you going with your feelings because you already know your shortcomings. So why would God do this for you? You already know your shortcomings, so why would God move on your behalf? You know, those are the things that the enemy will say to you. But but if you go to the word of God and when you you know the popular one now is Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, I you know I I know the plans I have for you, a plan to prosper you and not to harm you, you know, a plan of good and not evil. Um, I loved you with an everlasting love. Before the foundations of the earth, I knew you. When I formed thee in your mother's room, I, you know, he loves us. He's concerned about us. And uh, the the uh, scriptures will tell us that. But we don't know the word. That's another reason why it's hard to trust God. Because we don't know the word. I know you go to church. I know, hey Chantel, I know you've had a wonderful praise break. I know you enjoy two stepping across the church and jumping and shouting. I know you somebody saying, you know, the rafters off the building. I know all that happened. But you need to know the word of God. I know your pastor preaches a wonderful word. I know you leave there on Sunday inspired and on fire. I know that. But what happens when pastor's not around to preach? What happens when there's no choir to sing you happy, when there's no soloist that has a talent that's gifted from God to sing you happy? What what happens? What happens when there's no organ, no keyboard, there's no guitar, no drum, when there's no one around but you and your thoughts? Can you trust him? In the midnight hour when you're wondering how are you trusting him? Can you trust him? See, it's easy to say you trust the Lord. You know, we sing a song, I will trust in the Lord. You know that? I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. That's what we say. But are you trusting in Him when you don't see Him moving? And when you don't see Him moving on your behalf, can you trust Him? And before Shelly asked me, this is peppermint and green tea, no sweetener. Aren't we proud of me? To trust God when you can't trace him. Trust God. You know, a lot of us, um, we feel like because some of the things that we're suffering may be things of our own doing. You know, we have made the wrong decision. And we have to reap our consequences, even say, folks, yes, we have to reap our consequences for our actions and our body. And we wonder, will God help me? Do I deserve God's help? Uh, am I good enough to be helped? But he's going to help you. But you don't have to trust him. Trust his word. Trust his word that he's going to uh, destroy your enemies. Trust his word that he's going to move on your behalf. Trust his word. That he is your shepherd and you shall not want. That he's going to make you lay down in green pastures. Trust his word. That if you think on those things that he said to think upon. That you will have peace that passes understanding. That will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Trust his word. That said if you confess for us to confess our faults one to another. And to what? To pray for one another. That we might be healed. To upgird one, undergird one another. Trust his word. 
Trust his word that the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Yes, that he, you will be able to what, lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Trust is, is his word. And God has no other choice but to honor his word because he's faithful to his word. His word is true. Now, you may not see how he's going to work it out. I was listening to, uh, there's a testimony in the press symposium. Uh, one of the uh, presentations talking about her son and how he had moved to another job. And they kept saying he was in training, he was in training, but he wanted to be in the state with his children and all this other stuff. And anyway, it transpired that he got an offer from another job. And it was everything that he had wrote down. But see, he still had to call and say, Mama, they offering me this. What should I do? And she was like, well, why are you asking me? And he was like, well, because this is what I wrote down at the beginning of the year. But something in something there's all sometimes there's something in us that just won't let us trust that God did this thing. Be see, because you don't see how he's working. Now he if he had got to see how uh God had moved this and then moved that and moved this, he trust he, he trusted. But because it cropped up seemingly out of nowhere, boom, pow. It was hard for him to trust it. So I like the creation. You know, they call it the Big Bang. They call it the Big Bang Theory. But when God said, let there be, and stuff started moving, what if you thought it was going to look like? A Big Bang. Duh. <laughs> That's what it's going to look like. But God was moving. And see, and God is moving in our life, and there's some things we just cannot see. But when it happens, it's going to be like that suddenly blessing. My Auntie Lisa Hicks has been talking about that suddenly blessing. It's going to be a suddenly blessing. Oh, it's going to be a suddenly miracle. It's going to be a suddenly healing. It's going to be something suddenly. So that's why it's good to continue to trust him. He got it in control. You know, we worried about these people that say they're our friends and we could depend on them. We worried about family that we should be able to depend on. We so worried about what people think about us. And, and it has nothing to do with them. Your success, your business, your dream, your ministry... It has nothing to do with other people. Because if you start doing the work and trusting God, he'll send people to help you. He'll send people to buy your product. He'll send people to pay for your service. He'll send people to your church. He'll send people to your class. He'll send people to help you that love you, that's concerned about you. So we have to learn to trust God and trust that he knows what he's doing. We don't y'all need our help. Me and my godmama, we often talk about, you know, she'll say, I prayed for something. And I had it already worked out in my mind. How God, I wanted God to work. So I want you to do this. And you go over here and do that. And if you do that, then he'll do this. You know, and, and we make up in our mind how we want God to work. That's not our job. We tell him what we need and he'll work it out. He will work it out. So I pray to thank God for this daily devotion. God knows what he's doing on today. I pray to thank God for each and every one of you that have joined me just a few minutes to start our day in the word of God. Lord, I praise and I thank you for this day, for your love and kindness, your tender mercy, your grace. Thank you for your peace and your joy you bestowed upon us, oh God. Thank you for being a God that hears and a God that answers prayer. Thank you for being concerned about every area of our lives, oh God. We thank you for how you continue to watch over us and keep us, for how you protected us from hurt, harm, and danger, for how you kept us with, kept us with health and strength in our bodies for how you kept us oh god with a mind turned and a heart turned towards you and god we ask you to lead and guide us in a plain path on today help us to trust you oh god help us to believe you oh god and lord we ask you to help our unbelief lord we know that you are concerned about us we know what your word says about you loving us so help us to trust your word help us to stand on it let us not waver let us stand on it as a sure foundation now god we ask you to touch the sick among us heal the sick among us, heal the grieving among us, oh God, those that are watching now and those that are on the replay, those that are going through, those that are confused in their mind, God, Lord, we ask you to give them clarity of thought and give them peace in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch those that are wavering, whether they want to live for you or whether they don't, whether they want to serve you or whether or not, oh God, those that are suffering from fear and anxiety or pressures of being like their parents, whether their parents are in the body, out the body, oh God, but help them to know that you made them how you desire them to be and that you can use them as they are and anything that needs to be changed that you would do the work they don't have to do it themselves they don't have to be like their parents they don't have to be like their aunts and uncles God but help them to be 
what you've called them to be, God. And Lord, we ask you to lead and guide us on today in a plain path, be in the work of our hands and be in the words of our mouth that we won't go anywhere, do anything or say anything that it brings shame to your name. But we will only hear your voice and obey it because a stranger voice we will not follow because we are your sheep. We're the sheep of your pasture and you are our shepherd and we follow you where you lead. And Lord, we glorify you on today. We magnify you and give you praise because there is none like you. You are a holy and a righteous God. You are a magnificent and loving God and we appreciate you for being the father that we need in these days and times. And we appreciate you and we ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hey, Jane, how you doing? So, yeah, that's our devotion for today. God knows what he is doing. And the question for today is, when you can't trace his hand, trust his heart, what do you know about the character of God that enables you to trust his heart? You got to trust him. You ain't no way around it. You're going to trust him now. You're going to trust him later. You're going to trust them now. You're going to trust them later. Amen. So I pray to thank God for each and every one of you joining me for this brief devotion on today. Praying, praying that this word touches you and meets you at the need uh, where you are. That it uh, marinates in your heart. That it uh, blesses you. Uh, <laughs> right. I'm going to shut it down so it won't be too long for you. Uh, so I appreciate you for joining me. Thank you for rocking with me. Amen. I thank God for how he blessed in the prayer symposium on Saturday, how he blessed in the service on Sunday, and how he blessed me to come back home, um, and how God moved in a mighty way. Um, the prayer symposium was awesome. It was a nice, intimate setting. Uh, the Spirit of God moved, and everything I had written down on that paper in that plan, God wrecked it. He wrecked it <laughs> and, re re and resurrected it. Uh, to be what he wanted to be and it was an awesome time of uh, prayer and fellowship and learning so um, I appreciate you all for your support appreciate you all for coming out appreciate you all for your prayers uh, appreciate you for uh, being so kind so um, today remember what that we are blessed we are highly favored and we are and we are the apple of our father's eye right he's concerned about us he thinks we are the best thing to slice bread to him. He loves us with an everlasting us. He love. He cares for us. And everything that concerns us concerns him. So remember that God, that you are blessed. You are highly favored. You are the apple of your father's eye. He is concerned about you. He thinks you are the best thing to slice bread. He cares for you. Cast your cares on him. And he loves you with an everlasting love. I'll see you all tomorrow between the 7.30 and 8 a.m. hour. You all have a beautiful and a blessed day. Bye-bye.